Hello, everybody, and welcome to the following edition of Two Up Front, presented by Three Lions Pub. I'm Baxter Colburn. Yeah, this is Simon Provan. Joining you from the beautiful Attention Era Media Studios in downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's a beautiful day to talk about soccer, Simon, wouldn't you say? Always is. Always, Baxter. Well, we've got a fantastic show in store for you today. Our shopfutsal.com call-in line is going to be just flooded the entire show, Simon. Three huge interviews today coming up in the second segment, Chicago Red Stars, Casey Short, third segment, Boston Breakers, Rachel Wood, and fourth segment, FC Dallas's Tesho Akindeli will all be here with us. The so it's, U.S. It's huge, Open the Cup US champions. Open, I, tried to, I tried to leave that out, but no, <laughs> I, obviously it's a very big moment for FC Dallas. A 19-year drought ended, as we'll hear from Tesho. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an exciting time to be in Dallas, that's for sure. Absolutely, and of course, we've got two players from the NWSL on because they have their last weekend of regular season coming yeah. up. Playoff positioning still on the line, playoff uh, hopes are still on the line, at least uh, for Seattle. Exactly. That's the, that's the big deal. We'll have to see, of course, how everything turns out for those players and for those teams as well, too. But it'll be interesting to hear uh, from Casey, of course, to hear her thoughts going in towards the end of the year. I mean, Rachel Wood's going to be a fun interview as well, too, just because of the fact that Boston is they've been done for a long time, but to, just to get her perspective from it as well, too. But I've also been informed from Rachel before we even go on the air that she plans to heckle me. So... Everybody should heckle Baxter Colburn. I don't know why. Why are you heckling me, Rachel? I'm hoping she can uh, relieve that a little bit, but she apparently has a bone to pick with me about uh, a certain NWSL team that I support. So (laughs) we'll have to see, but that's that's all coming up in the third segment. Um, I actually am going to duck out of the studio for a little while, though, Simon, because uh, I'm also in the middle of work as well. That's the great part about uh, working at the Attention Air Media Studios is that I also am working in another room. So You sure are. I will be in and out for the uh, the broadcast today, but uh, I leave the show in comparable hands with you, Simon. I know you're going to. Well, do we a, shall see back. I know so. you're going to do a good job, so um, I will be back soon. So everybody, don't uh, don't give Simon too much crap. So uh, I'll be back soon. All right, and there he goes. Well, we're going to kick off the show like we usually do with our kick around. Of course, you're going to get just my opinion this afternoon as Baxter is out there working hard, sweating, doing what he does, doing what he loves to do, doing a bunch of interviews. But I want to kick around right away with some local news. Great game last night in the Milwaukee Cup. Folks, that's one of the great things about the city of Milwaukee. We've got two Division I soccer programs here, well-known ones as well. Of course, Marquette University head by Louis Bennett, and UW-Milwaukee, head by Chris Kelderman. Yes, Kelderman of the uh, MLS, played with DC United for a couple of years, also played in the old A-League with the Milwaukee Rampage and a bunch of other teams. But anyways, last night, what a game. This is what derbies are all about. Inner city game between UWM, Marquette University. Marquette goes up 3 nothing. At the start of the game, I believe only 14 minutes in, Marquette goes up 3 nothing. They have a goal scorer who hasn't scored in 34 games, puts in two goals right off the bat, puts up Marquette quickly. And it looked like, and that was uh, Shaponik, by the way, who had those two goals, so congratulations to him. It looked like Marquette was just going to roll all over UWM. However, Milwaukee did not rest easy. And I wouldn't even say that Marquette rested on their laurels. It was just a great comeback by Milwaukee. They end up tying this thing up 3-3. Three to three. It took them almost the rest of the game to do it, but they did so. Goes into overtime, and what is a derby without some controversy? UWM thought they should have had a penalty kick due to a handball in the final three or four minutes of overtime. Wasn't called. Game ends up 3-3. Three, three. Now this derby has been played for 41 years. This is the first time in the history of the Derby that they've had draws in back-to-back years. So, the Cup stays with Marquette University. We shall see what next year brings. Uh, I can tell you one thing, too, up front. We will do everything in our power to make sure that we are there at the Milwaukee Cup next year. All right, moving on. We're going to hop across the pond. You got to be excited if you're a U.S. fan. Christian Pulisic, 90 minutes. What's more, he also got an assist in the Champions League game last night for Borussia Dortmund. 6-0 route, as I said. Pulisic assisted on the fifth goal. 